the hardest part is knowing where I fall in this category because I'm, you know, you and I both were the same age. We fall in that weird, the zenials, zenials. Yeah. I don't know. Or the Star Wars era, maybe. Yeah, I am the Jedi that returned. <laughs> mm. So I don't know how many of you guys out there that are watching my videos are considered millennials. Honestly, I don't even know if I am considered a millennial. I'm in one of that like gray area where I kind of I, like I, or I'm going to date myself. I had a pager in high school and then later a cell phone. Like you know, a, a weird kind of place. We didn't have texting, but we had instant messenger. I assume that as I get older. I will call myself a millennial and not a Gen X because that would just make me feel young and I want to feel young. I'm gonna live forever. Why are millennials a problem? Okay, why am I a problem? <laughs> Nepotism. Um, that's why I'm a problem for y'all. <laughs> millennials are not buying, on the whole, original art. I mean, more than any generation in recent history, millennials are not investing in original art and it blows my mind because I think that millennials really pride themselves on individuality, on handmade kind of like homegrown kind of grassroots kind of stuff. But you look at most millennials that have invested in something to hang on their walls and you'll find a lot of posters. You'll find a lot of, I don't know, you call it like what pottery barn art, you know, for lack of a better term. I mean, hotel room art, generic stuff. And okay, that's okay but there is very little value placed in original art. And it's really actually no surprise because I mean, out of all the generations, the millennials were the first to really get hit with the arts being taken out of the curriculum in school. So there wasn't that education. It wasn't taught at a young age. You gotta get them when they're young. So I'm teaching my daughter now before she can even speak English. She's doing art. She doesn't Speaking even know Spanish, it. Though, right? She's speaking Spanish, yes. Say, hablo, change my diaper. So yeah, I'm surprised that millennials who pride themselves on individuality um, want to have the same stuff that everybody else does in their home. I mean, that doesn't sound very original to me. And there is actually a step even worse. There are those that have nothing on their walls, and, and you might be one of them. I mean, even though you watching this are most likely involved in the arts, or at least you know somebody. And have you been in there? It's like the difference between an asylum and a home. Like, bare walls really affect you. I used to go to a lot of hockey games here, the, the Carolina Hurricanes, and they would do this kind of like behind the scenes, cribs kind of style thing where they show you the homes, the athletes. The younger players who are millennials, all I could see is bare walls. It's just, you know, yeah, okay, they're athletes, maybe they're not into fine art, but I just, something on the wall, do they not understand that when you surround yourself with nothing, that does not invoke any emotion, that does not invoke any creativity, that doesn't invoke any motivation. That will affect your mood, your feeling of wellness and well-being. Now, I used to play a game, and this is, you know, another, like, you know, am I a millennial or, yeah, called The Sims. Have you played The Sims? In The Sims, when you decorated your house, because you, it was like, you know, you can't have a real life, so you play a game of life where you go to work, you go to the bathroom, you sleep. It's, it's really, why would I play this? But, you know, it was fun. When you put art up in that home, you got a boost of, I don't know, mood. I guess it was mood. It was, this is going back like 50 years, Katie. I don't remember how long ago it was, but I remember that when you hung things in the, on the wall, when you put plants um, in the house, it increased the wellness and well-being of everybody in that house. And I think that makes a lot of sense because I really believe that is the case. Now, millennials also, you know, especially those that are on the younger end of the millennial spectrum, uh, don't have a lot of money to invest in art. And that's another, another thing. It's like, well, you know, I can spend a couple thousand dollars on a television or a couple thousand dollars on art and the television is going to win, you know, or a computer or something. There's always something. I hear the new phone's going to be like over a thousand dollars and I got to have it. I'm going to sell blood <laughs> Not mine. Um, mixed together. Not mixed together. Yeah. <laughs> it's from Dodgeball. What? Not mixed together? So I'm not saying you have to invest a lot of money in art. And honestly, I don't even know if I can speak to art as an investment right now. It, it could be, but it's a very risky investment. I mean, if you're a risk taker and you want to invest in, in art, go for it, you know? But I don't know if that's um, the trend that we're seeing is that we'll, we'll buy a piece of art and it will be the next Picasso. I don't know. But what I will say is, as a millennial, part of the, you know, when I remember the, the past few years, to this day, those movements of shop local, 
right? You've heard that, shop local. It's definitely an idea that if you can go and, and surround yourself with artists, there's always like first Fridays or events in any city. I don't care how small, well, some of the small ones. I don't care how medium sized it is, let me say that. There are always art events. And you can go and you can meet these artists. You can speak to them. You can actually interact with them and form some sort of friendship, relationship, just acquaintanceship with them. And maybe, just maybe, regardless of if you bond with those artists, you will find something that speaks to you in a way that you've not experienced and certainly wouldn't experience from a poster or you know, something that is just very kind of generic. I mean, maybe that does help you. I mean, I, I think it's better than nothing. I do. You know, those bare walls really drive me nuts. But finding an original piece of art, I remember the first time I bought my, my very first piece of art, I was probably about 23. I was so proud. You know, I didn't spend a lot of money. I spent, you know, about 200 bucks. But I found something that told a story to me that the artists, when they were painting it, probably had, you know, something completely different in mind. But to me, it opened this window to something that I had forgotten, like a forgotten dream. And it brought me back. And the only way I would have even known that that was available was getting out there and looking at art. That is important. It's important to surround yourself with all these wonderful things. Art is the longest form of recorded history, okay? Art transcends language. You don't have to, you know, that's why we can kind of, you know, decipher cave paintings and even hieroglyphics. Those are, those are the Egyptians, for those of you millennials. I'm a millennial. I can say this stuff because I, I am. I, I want to feel so young. I'm not trying to push art as an investment. I'm trying to push it as something you buy for yourself that can make you feel good. Something that you surround yourself that brings you joy. That's, that's what I'm looking for. I want to bring you joy. I mean, Will brings up a good point. I mean, in my own house, I have pieces that I've done, and I have pieces that I've bought, I have pieces that I've traded, and that's all okay. It is totally okay, but I think that diversity is the spice of life. So if you surround yourself with your own art, okay, you know, if it makes you happy, but you might be really cheating yourself because if you think that you are the best artist in the world and you have nothing to learn from another artist, I got news for you. You know, nobody's, nobody's buying it. Nobody's thinking the same way you are. We are all in this together. This is an artist community, and it's important that we appreciate everybody's work that everybody brings to the table. That is what brings us together as human beings. It is very important that you understand the value of what it can bring to your life. And again, you don't have to spend, I'm not, I'm not sitting here preaching you to spend a fortune, but just give it a chance if you haven't already. And if there is, you know, if you're watching this video and you're not a millennial, think of ways that you can spread that message to those out there that might not be watching this. There are a couple thousand people that don't watch me. Um, everybody else does, but it's important that those few that are missing out, you know, you help me out and we inform them, okay? Yeah, share it, I like that. I want you to show me your enthusiasm. I want you to show me your appreciation for art. And I want you to show me your walls on Instagram, at Mike Not Jerry. Yeah, that was a plug. Uh, where I'm going to be doing inspections. Yeah, I want to see what your walls look like as an artist. I'm starting a show me your walls movement. What do you think of that? Hashtag show me your walls. Right, I like it. You know, show me your walls. I want to see your walls. Do you have big walls? You know, some walls are held for charity and some for fancy dress. Uh, but the walls that are held for pleasure are the walls I like the best. And my walls are always bouncing to the left and to the right. It's my belief that my big walls should be held every night. Oh, I've got, I can keep going. And add me on MySpace at Mike Not Jerry, where I will date myself. Oh boy.